Hello and welcome. Uh, got Charlie on today. Charlie, great to have you on, mate. Um, obviously, we, we, we won at weekend, uh, an away win, you know, after two home defeats. We, we win away, clean sheet and all. Uh, again, good three points away, to be fair, against a, a, a Wigan side who thumped um, Bolton week before, 4 0. So, a decent result there, Charlie. Yeah, um, I think a good result. I'll be honest, I think we dropped lucky that they got a red card because I personally mm. do not think it were a red card. I think he timed that challenge to perfection. No. Um, and I think if it were us that had been given a red card for that, I think would have would have been furious. Um, but again, it's luck that we need. We didn't have it, well, we didn't have it last year. And, you know... It's our turn this year to hopefully get that look and long may it continue. But it's uh, it's a good three points against a, a strong Wigan side. Um, you know, a couple of people I were impressed with. You know, McAtee, I think he did really well when he came on. Mm. Um, I were impressed with the way that Cotter was not just attacking, but he seemed to be getting back a bit more. So overall, I think I think it too excited over it and I wouldn't kind of start blowing smoke and saying that's it we're going to win league because we're, we're far from that but it does show that we can compete against teams you know such as Wigan even if they have got 10 men <laughs> yeah. yeah I get where you're coming from I mean to be fair when, when I saw a tackle I half expected just to yell her because uh, our, our look spins like you said from last season to this, I thought, oh, it's just going to be a yellow. But when it went red, I'm thinking, wow, he's, he's actually like, shown it. And I've seen it through a few angles. Some like saying, you know, it, it timed it right. Someone saying it was last man and all that kind of stuff. But again, we're going to take all to look what we can get because we didn't have out at all last season. So we'll take it in the first season round. I'm not, uh, I'll take it while we can. Uh, yeah. Like I said, long mate, continue. Well, let's hope we can uh, we've turned corner on that one. Uh, and again, I get we here on back. Cotter, I thought uh, defensive duties were a lot better. I was impressed with Aidan Marsh when he came on. Uh, Jack Shepard, I thought he had a, a right game. Me, uh, missing Kitchen. But again, I thought, and this is my own opinion, I thought we looked a, a, a lot more solid at back and more disciplined. Uh, everybody seemed to know their role, and that's including Williams, you know, Laparta and uh, Jack Shepard. And again, I get we're, we're down to 10 men, but in second day, they were trying to chuck kitchen sink. Roberts, again, great save, one hand save. He, he, you know, that could have been a different t- uh, tale. But yeah, for me, I thought it was a, a, an hard fought game with Roder's luck. But at the end of the day, we come away, we we'll move on. I mean, that might be what we need, that bit of luck, uh, Charlie. Yeah. Um, you know what? It's. Weird to say, but we did look more assured. We are kitchen being in that back line. Mm. Now, I know him and Cadden's had a couple of to-dos, you know, in a couple of games and whatever else. And I'm not saying it's kitchen's fault that we've lost, you know, three games on bounce or whatever, because it's not. But, you know, maybe again, they've said he's injured, you know, whether it's true or not, who knows. But it's sure that we can be assured and we can have quality centre halves or we can put a quality performance together, we are kitchen being there. Mm. Um, again, Shepherd looks solid. Um, you know, again, keeper absolutely unbelievable. And you can see his passion for club. You can see the passion. He, he wants to play football. Mm. And if, if he were our player and, you know, we had him permanently, he'd be my captain. Simply mm. because you can see it within him. Mm. Um, so it's one of them, you know, yeah, Shepherd's come from lower leagues, he's come from dark leagues, but he's, he's come up to it and, it, it, you know, he's proven that he can do it. So it's it's one of them, you know. If, if Kitchen is injured and where we are him, fair enough. We know that we've got a couple of centre-halves that, that can, I'm not saying the world beat us, but they can do a job. They can be mm. assured. And mm. it's, you know, it's good to see, I think. Um, obviously, you know, we've got, uh, is it 
Davinsky. What? Oh, D- uh, Degivny. Yeah, Degivny. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we've got him. I think the game that he played the other day, it was a little bit too soon. Um, you know, Lapata looks looks solid, but again, he's got a lot to learn. So we can't keep relying on these young lads to to step up to play all the time because we know what happens. I mean, you look at Jasper Moon, it ruined yeah. him for us. And he's gone to Burton and they love him. So the last thing we want to do is ruin the players that we've got in. Mm. But at the same time, we if a first team player such as Kitchen is not performing well you know, dropped or whatever else and be taken out of that spotlight for a bit. Mm. And it seemed to have worked on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, fair, fair point. And it's good to see, I think it was McCarthy, was starting in on uh, under 23s other day. Uh, so he's got some more minutes under belt. So it'd be great to get him eventually involved in first team squad. But, you know, it, obviously in starting 11, because it was a, a cruel injury for him as well. Mm. Uh, Kundi, I think he's still a bit of a way off. But again, start, you know, uh, play started to come back. On about play, started to come back. I mean, we didn't, you know, last week at transfer window, uh, Charlie and we just talking off air. It looks like about a number is going to rob him a million pound. We could end up with their play, uh, Coyote. Um, uh, and and again, for me, I would, and I, I said this off air is that if we were to get him for say 100 grand, 150 grand, what it's rumored to be, and rumors going about saying we might have to offload all the shot onto loan. I would rather keep it as is and, and give Aidan Marsh more game time rather than chop chop and swap about a bit and like that. What what shall I come back, Charlie? Yeah, um, you know what it is. It's we've we've had Ollie Shaw, you know, for what's it been twelve months? It might might not mm. quite mm. be that, you know. It, we can't remember because we've hardly seen him. Yeah. Um, Thing we want is for him to be another, you know, Obi Ulari or another Larry Secker coming in, wasting wages and not being played. That's making these signings. That's you know that's what needs to be asked. What is it that is not ready? Is it that is not good enough, or he's got a bad attitude? You know, mm. we can't keep spending money on players and just letting them sit on bench or not even be part of the squad. It's. I, I would rather, you know, we've got like Sejalo and whatever else, and we don't want to chuck them in too early, but if they're there, use them. It's, it's got to be done. Um, we can't just keep wasting money and wasting time. We need a player for here and for now. Mm. And to say that we've gone from a potential million pound player to 100 grand, that's 100% less than, you know, the, than the player's value. So it's it's just poor. It's you know, and again, I'm I'm not going to be sitting here saying this is this. It's my opinion. Mm. It's poor that we can't splash out a million pound for a player with income that we've had. If the board one or whoever it is wants to make a statement, great thing to do. It was pretty much signed, sealed, delivered that um, Nom were coming to Barnsley. Space for a couple of days, it's changed and he's he's going to Rotherham, which is. As rivals as such, mm. so mm. it's I, I really don't know. Um, McAtee, I can see him having a good season for us and being, you know, going back to Luton and being one of their potential main players next season. Mm. Um, but while we've got him, use him. Yeah, I'm impressed with McAtee as well. Uh, and I get where you're coming from, we, you know, we and on the. Rumour started probably a couple of weeks ago, like now, and I think longer it went on, it was like more looking less and less likely. And then, like I said, last couple of days, to be fair, it's like, well, Rob Rumin, Matt Taylor knows about him being extra. So it's like, here we go again, what it's going to be a signing that nobody really knows about, if I'm being honest. Uh, could you see any more signings? Could you see any potential players leaving, or do you think, you know? Going to be a rabbit out of somewhere and catch off guard. Um, I'll be honest. I do think. Uh, I think Kirby Kane might go. Mm. Um, just from you know from previous transfer windows. If I were to, we, we know what board so they physically said no players are leaving. I don't believe it. I think players will leave. If I were to choose three players that I think are going to leave, 
it might surprise a few people. I think Kirby Kane could potentially leave. Um, I could potentially see Jordan Williams leaving. Um, I don't know why, but you know he stated that he wants to play football at an higher level. Um, maybe Ollie Shaw. A lot of people will say you've missed Callum Styles. I don't think he's going to leave. I think mm. if he does leave, it'll be January. And if we can keep Styles, that could potentially be like a new signing as such because, you know, we all expect him to leave. If mm. we can keep hold of him, fair enough. We've just got to make sure that when he does go, whether that's January, end of season, we replace him. Um, so, yeah, it's to be fair, I really, really don't know. Um, I'd probably say Kane, um, Williams and, you know, maybe Ollie Shaw out on loan. Kitchen, I'm a bit unsure of. I mean, a lot of people might say, should we have cashed in on him? When these rumours from Coventry were coming in, two and a half million, should we have cashed in on him? And some people might say yes, some people might say no. Originally, I said no. Looking at it now, I think maybe we should have done. Maybe we should have cashed in on him. But would the money have been reinvested into the squad? That, that's my mm. only concern. Would mm. the money be reinvested? And I don't think it would be. Um, it's, I know it's kind of going off subject a bit, but if we can't get shirts in the club shop, sometime, and we're more, without sounding negative, we're more bothered about getting tea and coffee in fan zone, then that, that, that just sets standards from off. Get the shirts in. That 7-0 win against Port Vale would have been the perfect time for the club to earn money. People would have gone into that club shop, bought shirts and gone, that's it, we're winning league, you know. And, yeah, I, money's not going back into the club, in my opinion, but, you know, I, I'm probably wrong. No, no, it's... Some well, it's like I say, it's all about opinions, mate, and I've seen certain things on, on media, social media as well, on about uh, club shop fanatics. and. And we're on that on that as well. I think club shop, the fanatics experience is out out from uh, being from fantastic. I think it's been a shambles. Uh, no shirts in, only just started to trickle through like now. Nah. But you go in club shop, there's no people were asking for. Have you got any stuff for bands? You know, for baby grows. You, you know, uh, your mugs, your key rings, your scarves, and there's no in. It's literally. You know, pay by card only, a few bits of training gear, 50 quid a top, and people have been saying, well, I come at Knott's Forest, it's 34 quid, here it's 50 quid. And and it's like, where do you go? Um, I used to go in shop, and there used to be a variety of stuff, programmes, mugs, mm. kitchenware, stationery, stuff like that. There's nothing. It's nothing. It's it's a bland-looking, tired shop now. And I know we've gone off the subject, but it's right what you're saying, you know. Missed out on an ideal opportunity on about money reinvested in club, but us as fans are not getting a chance to reinvest in club because people wanting refunds for the shirts. It's we already back in June, three months later, and it's like, oh, been told it's going to be end of September like now. So again, it's been a farce. Uh, and just going back to transfers, what you're on about, I can see, I could see Kane if I'm being honest. I thought when he got asked a question a couple of weeks ago now. By his contract, is in last year in his contract, and when he got asked, he went, "My best ass word for about that." So you know, it's obviously if there's no really happening there. All the show, I feel sorry for the lad because I think he's, he for some unknown reason, I don't know if he's like struggling with fitness or he's not rated by a new coach. Even last season, he, he won't get in game time, uh, and the lad, you know, he touched on like Jasper Moon. It could, it could hurt to play. It could, it could ruin lad. You know, he come down from Scotland, adjusted, he wants to play football, but again, for some reason, it's not worked out right for him. And, you know, you, you look at stuff like that and you're thinking, where are we going as a club, Ben? Uh, where is us as fans wanted to put his hard uh, money in, you know, and we're not, getting, we're not being able to have a chance. Like I said, on about tea and coffee in the fan zone, for me... That might be that, that might be a valid reason for some people, but should it be put towards the trust and stuff like that in issues? Mm. Why is it having to take to like a fans forum meeting for fans again to raise issues? 
there's not we don't seem to be that bridging gap for you know there's a disabled toilet and rail and we would joke and laugh about it after but at the time that's a valid reason but surely people should yeah. notice and raise it through the trust let the trust act on behalf of us, us as fans us as fans can you go to the board right we, we want this addressing car park situation you know it's a it's a it's a fast gain art it's not before there don't seem to be any dialogue between the club and the fans or the fans and the the trust whatever it may be and there's no communication again this is where it comes to a fans forum where things like this are getting asked and i'm like if this question is getting asked tea and coffee protection i'm thinking yeah it's a question but in grand scheme of things should that have been asked at a separate time for another opportunity and i get i get where people come you know yeah, coming from um, and that you know it's it and it's it, it, it's a built-up frustration isn't it built-up frustration for me um yeah so I'm just going off a tangent there but this is the frustrating thing about it is that you yeah. know link link with players um, and also you know what football. i think um i think Yeah, go on, mate. You're all right. Yeah, you're good. Go on. I don't know if you can hear me. Are you good? Just, Charlie, just for a minute. But, yeah, just on about the, the experience and stuff like that for uh, fans... Yeah, till I just gone for a minute. So yeah, just just for uh, fans' experience and stuff like that, and I get where where it's coming from, um, missing out on opportunities and stuff like that. But coming up to the week, uh, after, from the Wigan game, a, a good game against uh, Wigan for result side, we're back to winning ways. We come to the Cheltenham game, so Cheltenham game is going to be uh, another test, another away game. Charlie's back now, so yeah, Charlie just been on about. An away win at Wigan, you know, we've got an away game coming up at Cheltenham uh, and then international break, obviously, for a uh, post game rearranged. But going into the Cheltenham game, same that, you know, we, we aren't signing anybody, nobody's left into the Cheltenham game. It's going to it's gonna be a tough a tough game back at Cheltenham. It's going to be a tough ground to go to again, isn't it, for a result? Yeah, um, sorry about that, mate. No, Internet right. cut off. But yeah, I do think that it, Cheltenham, you know, we we could be looking, thinking it's going to be like last year. We're going to go to Cheltenham. We're going to batter them. We're you know go to teams like that and beat them. And it's not going to be the case. Um, personally, I I think that this League One is one of the weakest League Ones it's ever been. But at the same time, the the squads that or the clubs that are at the lower end of the table, their squads are getting stronger. Mm. So so whereas the teams are getting weaker disrespect to them the squads are getting stronger for for their level so i do think it's i mean we've not got the strongest of squads let's be fair pa on paper we have realistically looking at it we know what can happen so cheltenham is going to be a it's going to be a tough game it's no game's going to be easy this season until we've got that momentum behind us and we've got you know got a couple of wins under his belt we've got the confidence um and we can build on from that when we're having games where it's a 7 0 win, a defeat, a defeat, a defeat, a 2 0 win, it's there's no consistency. We you've not got time to build and progress, so it's going to take a bit of time. And you know, would I take a point? Yeah, it's an away game. Should we be getting three points realistically? Yeah, we should. So it's you know, you don't know what to expect anymore. You, you really don't. I mean, people would have said to Wigan will beat Cheltenham hmm. we could go opposite way we could beat Wigan and lose to Cheltenham but there's a different perspective to it if you lose to Wigan and people you know they'll say that's fine we expected it to happen you know you lose against Cheltenham people start thinking Christ what's happening we're losing to teams like Cheltenham so it's hmm. and you know no disrespect to them but it, it, that's the way that fans look and the way that fans think yeah, that's true. And a good point with your med there, actually, with uh, teams such as Cheltenham. It's no respect to Cheltenham, but you look at such as Cheltenham and teams like that, is that 
they are improving the squads. I mean, you look at Charlton, they just sat there, manager. But they, I thought they invested pretty well, if I'm being honest, Char Charlton, mm -hmm. you know. And you don't get Robert Green and you're down there, and manager goes, if a fresh gaff will come in, they'll probably change that round because they have got some decent players. We've made some decent signings here. Uh, so you can see them turning it around. So I get where you're coming from with that. You, they are investing in better players, better quality of players, sorry. So it is making that, that what can I say without being disrespectful here now, them kind of sides uh, investing in players to make them better, even though it's a pretty poor league. Mm. When you're looking on, on, on teams with paper, uh, yeah, we should be going to Cheltenham and, you know, you look at his players, what we've got on paper and what we what we know we're capable of doing. But again, it's building that momentum up, that consistency. You know, you don't want to be a win, loss, loss, draw, win, loss, loss, draw. You, you want to be a win, a draw, win, 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 draw, win. Mm. And that's when you start building the points up, especially when it's like midweek, weekend, midweek, weekend game coming up. Before you know where we are, we're going to be in September. Games come thick and fast, and then all of a sudden we're in December. It's, it's like going to New Year. It's like, well, you know what I mean? It's going to be another window coming through. So, I mean, going into Cheltenham game, would you make any changes? This would be an interesting one. Would you make any... Bearing in mind, you know, Kitchen's still, you know, say say he's back from injury. Would you make any changes um, in Cheltenham game? Um... If Kitchen's back fit, I still won't put him in. Um, I'd put him on yeah. bench. I'd stick with, you know, Gadden as your left back, Cotter, potentially O'Keefe as your right wing back, because um, I think he's a really good player. Um, and then, you know, your back three, Williams, Lapata, Jack Shepard. Um, again, midfield, I think you've kind of got to leave that same. The only change I would potentially make from the Wigan game is I'd keep Russell in I'd keep Phillips in Brad take Kane out and replace him with Styles if he's still here because I think sometimes right. Kane you know he goes under radar he does he does when he has a good game he does things well but when he has a quiet game he's very quiet so I, I just think change it up a bit take Kane out put Styles in and see what happens um, because you know it's still a solid midfield and then again, we know what main striker is with Cole. It's just trying to find uh, a strike partner for him. Personally, I'd be playing McAtee. Um, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd be. You, you've got to put him in there. I mean, he yeah. showed his quality. He showed what he can do. He looks good with his feet. Um, again, yeah, he missed an open net. He should have probably had two that game, but we can let him off. Hmm. Um, so it's yeah. I, I, they're they're probably two changes. Kane out and put Styles in and you know um drop Waters um or whoever he's planning on putting up front and mm. put McAtee in. Um which, you know, just just gotta see see where it goes. It can't it's not weakening squad. We know that, you know. Mm. Styles is probably a better replacement for Kane. We aren't being disrespectful. Mm. One's got international football, one ain't. Mm. And again, McAtee for Waters you know, we've not seen much from Watters over the last few games. Now, whether that's match fitness, getting used to it, style, whatever it is, um, McAtee seems to have come in and adapted to it like that. So, mm. get yeah. go. Why not? Yeah, good shot. Uh, yeah, um, I, I kind of agree with that. Um, I've just got a feeling that Kitchen, it, it will bring Kitchen in. I think we ain't being captain. Um, and again, it, it would be interesting to see what happens if he does bring Kitchen in and see if he does disrupt the back line because I think we looked a lot more comfortable at back. Uh, since a lot more solid as a unit. Will he come in? I'd, I'd say not, but I've just got a feeling because he's the captain, I think he's liable to just put him in, which I I, I think would be a bit unfair on whoever would miss out because I didn't think Shepard did, did out wrong. Uh, Lapata no. looked pretty solid, so... Again, it'd be, a, it'd be an interesting call that midfield. Yeah, I'd change it midfield for Kane as well. Um, again, it's it's a miss on cold. Good to see Aaron Phillips back after his three games, um, missing from the suspension as well. So, again, good to see Aaron Phillips back, uh, up front, just behind the front two. Cole, 
You think it's going to be Cole? And I'll go with McAtee as well. I think, like uh, Charlie said earlier, when McAtee came on, he looked lively. He looked to adapt to it straight away. Yeah, he missed him. You know, everybody thought, I thought we were going to put it in back in net when he came on and it, it, it missed it. Whether that's because he would just come onto the pitch and he was getting up to game speed, match match speed and that into the game, adapt to it. But again, I think he more of a med up for it. Um, he more of a med up for it when he came on, McAtee. So, yeah, I mean, just saying, Charlie, good to see Adam Phillips come back uh, after his three games missing from suspension. I want to see him get more, I think he's a lively player just behind front two. Uh, so, yeah, I'm good for Phillips. Devante Cole, yeah, and McAtee. Missed up and goal, but at the end of the day, what he just gained into game because he just come on up to yeah. you know up to fitness, up to speed, with game tempo. But in more of a up for it, with second, what he what he scored. Shout out to Aiden Marsh. Thought when he come on, yeah, I thought he looked lively. He sent to run at him and cause a bit of a terror. So I'd, I'd go with that. What you said there with line up, um, and you know, I'd probably even have, for whatever reason. Uh, Aiden Marsh, I'd use him more as a sub, and I, I, I could chuck him on in, in replace uh, Aaron Phillips or whoever. Yeah, wanted to go four three three, you know, and mix it up because I think Aiden Marsh got some pace, scored a couple of goals and all at under twenty three. So again, someone who was on form, and that's what you wanted to be going. That yeah, do you know what confidence is high is on the buzz. Let's keep it going. First team, let's see what we can do, integrate it, and before you know where you're going, bang, he's off and away, and confidence is high. So again, um, I'll go with that all day long. So yeah, I I, I, I agree with you line up there. Um, who do you think will be influential, the most influential player for Barnsley in score prediction, Ben Charlie? Um, you know, most influential. I think it's got to be. I'm going to go with Cole. Um, I don't think there's there's any other option simply because. If he gets that ball and he drives at defenders, hmm. you know, he's putting us on front foot. If he gets that ball and he can't do no way or he's not got the service, we're not going to get nowhere in that final third. So, you know, I think Cole could be the influential player. Going for a score prediction, um, probably going to go 2-1 um, hmm. to us. Um, I think we'll... We'll just get through because I think it'll be a really, really tough game. Yeah, I'm going two one and all. Uh, I think it'll be a tough game, but I think with uh, confidence, if 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 it is going to be Cole and McAtee but, up front, I think it's going to cause know. us some problems. Uh, so I'm going that. Uh, for me, most influential player, Sam Daffis, but I think most influential player. For us, is going to be Liam Roberts because I just think he organizes that defense and is so in it. I think he's starting to what can I say? I think the fans are taking to Liam Roberts, and I think also the defensive line has also got in trust and belief in Liam Roberts. So I think Liam Roberts will be his influential player, like we touched on earlier. It, it, for me, he could be captain, and it's very rare I say I don't like captains being a goalkeeper or a, a striker but Liam Roberts seems to be that I think he's 28 29 he seems to be very done that he's got that bigger club mentality without being big headed with it if I know what I mean but he's all is yeah. so bought into the the culture at club he's trying to organize and shout and marshal his defense and I'm thinking if he's if you're doing that to the a pretty newish back free defensive unit you were doing that, they've got confidence in you and it can work both ways. So I think we his experience where he can have a look on the back three and if you know if listen to him and can see things, I think he could be influential at that. So again, a bit of a weird and goalkeeper being influential, but in reasons of seeing he can have a see the game of the defensive yeah. unit kind of thing. Um and again, it probably all blow blow out of water because we'll probably have kitchen start. Uh Kane will probably start in midfield and but again, it's what happens in training. There'd been no midweek game for us, so uh, it'd, been, it'd be interesting to see what the the lineup is. That'd be interesting. Bearing in mind, no players come or go. 
you know, hope could change before yeah. first of September. But as it is now, I think that's what we kind of agree on, Mike. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just quickly, do, do you think that Kitchen's worthy of being captain? Um, in my own opinion, I don't think he's a captain material. I think he's got it because he's, he's more or less stood in for it uh, last season. Uh, if I had my pick of a captain, and if he was starting him with fit, it'd be Luke O'Connell. Uh, big captain for me, uh, but I don't think he's yeah. captain material. I think after Luke O'Connell, I could see it go to Williams, like who's he did do against uh, Wigan, and after that, I could see it being Liam Roberts. If I'm being honest, I know he's not our player, but that's the kind of the leader because you're looking at leaders on pitch. No disrespect to any other players, I'm not you know Russell or Phillips, or I don't like that, but I don't see them as a, a leader as in, in, a, in a strong character. If you know what I mean, that's what I'm looking at. Do you, do you see Kitchen as a, a Kitchen? Um, at start of the season, I said, yeah, perfect captain. Now I'm looking and I'm thinking, not at all. Mm. Um, and it's uh, it's got to be Connell. Even though he's a young lad, the way that he runs games is is just quality. At it, mm. You know, it's it, it's so good. And he, he is a big miss. One player yeah. don't make a squad, but one player can have a massive impact. And... You know, we all want him to have a speedy recovery with whatever it is he's dealing with. Um, you know, when he's back, I'd, I'd be, you know, I'd be giving him captaincy straight away. I don't think Williams is a captain. Mm. Um, my opinion, I think it's too much pressure on him. I could see Cadden potentially being a captain, but then again, is that going to lose his style of play? Mm. So I think, you know, I think Connell. Um, think he's he's perfect captain you don't want to get to call because he's he's not seeing what's going on yeah. behind him you mm. know one of one of your either defenders or your midfielders can see everything so mm. yeah good good point Matt. yeah good point and again people who are watching uh like subscribe share let us know your comments let us know your comments on score prediction uh captain material who do you think is best captain material at the club um like i said luke connell and you know we are missing him I think that's, you know, quality in that midfield. It's not disrespect to others, but when you see Connell, not just work at a top ball, but also off the ball as well, for the work he puts in, it's like second to none. And like I say, I hope he comes back with speed recovery. I know he were on pitch with lads when he at Wigan, uh, going clap, applauding fans. So all being well, Touchwood is not a million miles away, probably after international break. Not jinxing up, but I'd like to see him back into either training or you know coming back. Like I think we're solely missed by a lot of Barnsley fans. Me and all, he's my favourite player. So yeah, uh, yeah, wanting back uh, pretty sharpish. Uh, but yeah, let us know your thoughts. Going down to Cheltenham, have a safe journey, safe travels back. Like we always say, uh, bring back three points. Let's let's come back with a win. Uh, keep this running away streak going if we can. Uh, some of what we're sadly uh, missing. Uh, Charlie, as always, it's been a pleasure. I mean, you're on, mate. Some good uh, thoughts. No worries. Good debates. Uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts and comments below. Score predictions. Who do you think will be stand out playing? Captain material. And uh, all being well, we can sign some players. No key players will be going. Uh, we can strengthen, we can push on. But uh, that'll be another show another day, probably. But uh, yeah, yeah we, we, can, we can hope as well. We can hope as well. You never know. Get them motto numbers on. You, you never know. Uh, yeah, get Euros on. That's on a Friday, isn't it? So be all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> try and get try and get it before it, uh, deadline cut off. Like, make sure it goes into mm. your bank accounts, and we can uh, get some uh, uh, players bought in and uh, move on, push on from there. So yeah, thanks for watching. It's all about opinions. Be respectful, and uh, that's what we always say. Um, nobody's ever right, nobody's ever wrong. It's all about opinions, isn't it? One thing left to say: you Reds. 